Hi guys, welcome back. This is Match Hat episode 267, featuring the second installment of my interview with the great Tom Hall. This part of the interview, which focus in on his uh, contributions to Wolfenstein 3D and Doom, and we find out the real reason why Tom decided to leave id, one of the great game studios and certainly at the, at the height of its power right after the release of Doom. A lot of great stuff in this episode, so without further ado, here is Mr. Tom Hall. Paul. Well, let's talk then about Wolfenstein uh, 3D. Uh, what was your credit as the uh, director on that, I believe? Uh, so I'm just wondering what was your involvement with the game and, and what did you personally think about it? Uh, Wolfenstein 3D? Yes. Uh, well, I was creative director. I mean, I designed the game uh, and did the lion's share of the levels. I think uh, did most of the levels for the first three episodes and I think I did like half the next um, something like that so john and i kind of split them eventually because there's just so many to make in six months uh but yeah i just you know came the original design we'd all talked about was kind of like return to castle wolfenstein the apple II, so you'd have like you know hiding bodies and you know trying to be wearing uniforms and be secret and stuff like that but it, you know as we were playing it was just like well this is like a really brutal game this is like you know just fast and brutal and it's it's so fast that it's it's a shame to waste that fastness on sort of a slower game so we just think you know let's let's just make some weapons you go through the love you unlock doors and shoot people and uh shoot whatever and uh that seemed to, to fit more uh i mean we had uh brainstormed a bunch of concepts and then uh, Romero was like, you know, like a brutal game like this, you know, uh, the old game Wolfenstein would be a good theme. Like Nazis are a great enemy after, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark sort of showed that. Uh, and we tried to hunt down the guy that did, or the company that did the game. And then the rights seemed to like be with this guy in a garage in Michigan or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's just like really not uh, it's sort of just been abandoned. And uh, later we met up with Silas Warner, and he had interesting stories about music software. But uh, anyway, so we found out you know we could basically use it, and so that was the perfect theme. So we kind of uh, put those two together, and uh, and that was really great. But it, making the level at the time was just like, well, you shoot stuff and you open doors, and shoot stuff and open doors, and maybe you know collect some stuff on the ground. But it. it it needed that 10% thing, that, that thing that you do apart from just blazing through levels. And so I fought really hard and, and, and you know, Carmack fought really hard back because he loves an elegant uh, engine and this made it slightly inelegant. But you needed push walls. You needed secrets to, you know, have more interest to the game like you get through the level and you go like what i missed a whole bunch of secrets oh no so you could want to replay that and so i fought really hard for that and that got in and that really made sort of like the whole experience you know really flow and really great I, when i talked to romero about uh, wolfenstein uh, 3d he was he said he was convinced from the very beginning that this game was going to be huge and uh, just be a, a revolution did you were you similarly uh, optimistic about it I mean, we this was our, you know, like our third one that we'd done that. So we knew we were at least making kind of a cool game and it had really evolved to something that's really kind of feeling special. But we were actually testing Wolfenstein and we kind of looked around and it's like, no one's made a game like this before. It's like, is we're kind of, you know, saying, is that okay? <laughs> you know, it was kind of like, wow, you know, this is, you know, going to be pretty cool, you know, that, that you're... It was weird in the moment to understand you're making something new, and and it was kind of weird and cool at the same time. And and so we we thought it was going to be you know, pretty successful. We didn't know how crazy successful it would be, but yeah. When you say third one, you're talking about uh, Hover Tank and Catacombs before that. We 
iterated and we didn't try to tackle the whole problem at once, which is a, again, the problem with some of some of the game creation tools. It's just like, if you try to tackle the whole problem at once, it can, it can be daunting either on the starting end or on the receiving end or it'll take you too long or something like that. So we just, you know, let's get you know 3D down. What does it mean to make a 3D game and fight against tanks and stuff like that and monsters and stuff. And then we did Catacombs 3D. And it's like, okay, let's, you know, improve the graphics so there's actual textures on the walls. And it was a kind of fortuitous that we were... Um, doing a bunch of little games for soft disk because that was great training to iterate quickly just like we could do whole new types of games in a month and and so that was good training for what we were to do and so we just iterated a bunch of different games marching towards the thing that would uh lead to our great success well of course after that came doom uh, so what was it like working on that game uh that was that was Great. Uh, the uh, we had these next computers, which are essentially like Macs are now. The 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 tools were just really well created, and uh, Macs are now based on the same software. It's a, a thing called Mock, with a shell over a form of Unix, and OS X is is pretty much that now, and they have the same kind of browser and stuff. But um, those are just really empowering because they had these visual tools where you could just say i want to start an app and you just drag little connectors to windows that for the functions of all the menu items and they just work and you just type your code and it works it took the drudgery as it were out of creating an application uh so i guess that's kind of like an early influence too for this kind of like wow you, you can really make something that's that allows people to just do the stuff that's important and take all the drudgery out. Um, and so that was really empowering and cool and stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, we were, as, as we were going on with, you know, Doom was kind of, we did Spirit of Destiny, so Doom was kind of our fifth iteration on this type of game. And I was wanting to, you know, do more creative stuff and levels, like, you know, environment dangers or just a tiny bit of story and stuff like that. And it was basically the point where it became a technology company. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a brilliant, brilliant game and, uh, you know, innovated on so many technological points and was uh, really brilliant. And, and at the time, uh, Carmack had given me this book of like cement levels or cement building that the military makes, which oddly is sort of Halo-esque now, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, and said just do this make them really really simple really really simple and it was it was you know he didn't want a lot of polys to be tossed into his engine and uh to romero's credit at the time he just said oh, i'm gonna make some levels and made them really big and complex and it's like make your engine faster <laughs> so i was like oh all right so i mean that kind of uh clashing of those two kind of led to to a lot of brilliant levels in there and i i mean i did seven levels in doom uh and sort of designed the weapons and and fought again the thing i fought for this time was all the monsters were bipedal it just like guys in alien suits walking at you and i just fought 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 and finally we got you know like hackademons and you know burning skulls floating at you and stuff like that which was cool and it allowed them to come from different places than the floor uh but again it was just it was sort of at a time where i was you know yearning to be super creative and they were yearning to be get levels into these uh this technological masterpiece and and it was it just made sense to for it to keep going in that direction because you know wolfenstein was a technical masterpiece and this was another technical masterpiece and that was a brilliant brilliant game that's a good segue into this question from a viewer, uh, Matthew C. on Twitter. Uh, he wants me to ask you about your feelings about Commander Keen and its software and your, uh, he's got quotations here, lack of motivation uh, that eventually led you to move away from the company. I'd love to hear you talk about how you felt around that time and especially why you left id. Um, well, uh, I think the part of the, part of the thing was, you know, Commander Keen still left there, and that that 
very sad that Commander King got left behind. And I don't think they've really done anything. They did a Game Boy Color game, which really wasn't in the spirit of King. They just let some other company do it, and it uh, it wasn't that good. Um, and But at the time, I was just... It was obvious that my need for creativity and, and Carmack's need for technology... Uh, and with just you know some levels to show it off, were just not working out. And you know we had a meeting and uh, and it it was freeing to leave. I mean it was it's it's hard to you know like, well it was freeing to leave the Beatles. Uh, you know but uh, it it weighed on my heart so much that I couldn't I wasn't able to create and and uh, come up with uh, innovations in my. Uh, the way I was thinking about them, so uh, it just made sense to part ways, and and you know, I concurred with them and stuff like that. And I mean, I I have had a varied career in all sorts of different things, and uh, enjoyed some pro- projects, and some have been okay. Uh, but at least I've been able to express myself, and and that's. I mean, I've managed to steer my career away from uh, fortune and fame, but uh, <laughs> but I've I've enjoyed the things I've worked on and and felt creatively enabled, and that's more important than anything. So, I mean, my first job, you know, I took for the third the pay, and I I really I mean I like you know having a salary and stuff like that, but what's important to me is being able to create. So there's there's no truth to these sort of rumors that it was you didn't like the the violence and and the gore. No, I was I was I mean, hello. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I, I mean I was drawing demons and all sorts of stuff. Uh, some of the elements I had in there were you know. Uh, <laughs> were... <You're> still... <laughs> it's like blinking on and off here. <laughs> I'm paranoid now. It's just like someone's going to slam a hammer on my hand. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, uh, I'd forgotten the whole question now. So <laughs> you didn't, it didn't have anything to do with the violence and the gore. And, yeah. you know. No, I mean, we all loved Alien. We all loved uh, this uh, comic book named Mage. Uh, which I think was Mage, uh, and there's Demon Knight, and those kind of merged together to be sort of, and and Evil Dead Two kind of all merged together to be the content of Doom and stuff like that. But uh, so I mean, we all you know watch crazy, uh, bloody stuff. I think the thing that that was the problem was uh, the initial talking of Doom was let's make this a one seamless world. I'm going to make an engine that you could seamlessly walk between levels, unlike Wolfenstein. And I I fought against that, just horribly fought against it. It was like, that's not innovation we need to make here. People love, you know, the sort of being able to finish a level, finish a level. In Wolfenstein, let's just innovate in, you know, the technology and the cool, you know, new look that looks a lot better. And so no, I'm gonna make one big level. So I said, well, okay, I'll make this, you know, big story and this, you know, like you find these things that are sort of like interesting things, like you get a, a cut off hand of this guy to open a door with, you know, some something that embraces the visceral nature. Also, I like the idea of the people thinking these were aliens. And then realizing they'd actually opened up hell. So it was sort of like that. A lot of my game concepts are it appears one way, but it's really another. Or this character is, this is him in real life, but this is his alter ego. Or like an Akronox is, you know, they, this is how they are now, but they had something from their past that they're, they're, they can't get over. Uh, so that was kind of like that. And, uh, I worked a month on, you know, creating, you know, this base and this other base on the other side. So you journey from reality into a slice of hell. Then you come back and reality has been perverted to hell, which is kind of what they didn't do. (laughs) 
So it's nice to see the concept finally coming out. But uh, so I came up with that and it was like, worked on a month and it was, you know, and that's a lot of the level names are from that. And then I came in and Carmack just said, oh, we're just doing level to level now. Oh, and just like no discussion or anything. So it was just like, oh, okay, uh, it throws away a month of my work, you know, and uh, uh and that, you know, that hurt. And it was just, it was sort of like, just, that's it. And uh, so that sort of uh, compiled on the, how hard it was to get push walls in the game and so on. It's just like, I just, you know, was getting less and less enabled and the stuff I was doing was less and less uh, seen as important or something like that. So, I mean, it was heading towards like, we need really cool data in these really cool this really cool technology and and it was just inevitable so i mean the, it it happened the way it happened because we were the people we were and uh that's totally fine with me and that's all for this week's episode i hope you guys enjoyed that i should be back uh Later this week, actually, had a bit of a delay getting this one out. Sorry about that. Uh, but hopefully the third and final installment of this interview should be out soon. Yes, Tom does talk about Anachronox. So stay tuned. I know you guys will uh, are looking forward to that. As always, I want to thank you very, very, very much. If you have supported my show, really means uh, the world to me, guys. If you'd like to support the show yourself, if you haven't done so, just go to the Patreon link in the show notes. It takes all of 10 seconds if not fewer, and you can be signed up. And remember, uh, you can sign up for a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, uh, whatever you feel the show is worth to you. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Oh, let's see. What about the news from the Mac King? Uh, some pretty good news this week. We've got Thimbleweed Park has uh, already met its uh, Kickstarter goal. Remember, this is the Ron Gilbert, uh, Gary Winnick uh, Kickstarter project, sort of a classic looking point-and-click adventure. They've already, I think they've actually uh, doubled what they were asking already. Uh, two weeks left to go, so it's really, looks like they might uh, take it all the way to the top of their stretch goals. And by the way, their uh, next goal is the, is for an iOS Android version, and then the one after that, a little over half a million, they uh, will have a talkie uh, version. So you probably remember those. <laughs> in other words, voice actors will come in to read the script. Uh, so exciting stuff. Congrats uh, to those guys. Um, also, the Convoy game, uh, that's the roguelike uh, tactical uh, hybrid sort of game, FTL meets uh, roguelike, I guess. Uh, that has been funded at 220k uh, euros, so again, more than twice what they were asking for, so looking forward to seeing that. And then, uh, not a craft, or not a Kickstarter related thing, but a game called Craft the World has launched. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, I'm kind of interested in those towns, Minecraft, Dwarf, uh, Fortress kind of games. Uh, that seems to fit the bill. I've been having some fun with it, but I have to admit I do have uh, a pretty serious problem with it, uh, namely with the uh, drag and drop interface. It's kind of a tedious after a while. So I don't want to give it an unqualified recommendation, but uh, still, you know, go check it out. And if that doesn't sound like something that would bother you, you might uh, uh, like the game. I actually love every other part of the game. I just don't like that. And so that's on Steam right now for $19. Uh, I think I had I caught it on sale for $12 uh, last, uh, earlier this uh, week. So, uh, you know, just keep an eye on that. All right, so what about that ale of the week? Well, uh, this week I've got an Oktoberfest from the Horny Goat Brewing Company, a seasonal beer, obviously. Uh, this is a pint uh, size. Uh, alcohol, 5.6%, so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, this is a malt forward beer with caramel and biscuit qualities. Okay. Uh, we use German noble hops throughout the boil because they are low in alpha acids. This means we can add large amounts without exceeding our bittering target, leaving the beer very balanced, but with a great deal of hop flavor. Yeah, it's like everybody's an expert now, you know, so they can throw out these terms and expect us to know what the heck they're talking about. I don't really care. I just care about taste. Uh, anyway, I don't see anything else on the uh, on the can, rather, about uh, about it. So let's just go ahead and get this open and see what this is all about. 
All right, so I got some of this horny goat Oktoberfest here in the rather excellent drinking horn. Ah, smells good. We've got a lot of caramel in this one, a little bit of the hops, a little bit of a coffee like uh, uh, aroma to it, but it smells pretty good. Uh, let's give it a taste. I guess you'd still call that sort of a malty flavor. Let me try it again. A little bit of bitterness, a little bit of a, a caramel, definitely a strong malt flavor. I'm really starting to uh, notice that now. I'm gonna try it one more time. In fact, you know, it's actually not bad. It's a little bit of, uh, yeah, you definitely sort of taste that corn flakes like uh, flavor that you get sometimes uh, with, with the lagers. Uh, which maybe this one uh, this one is. I uh, can't say I'm really enjoying this. It's uh, It's got more flavor than, say, uh, a Bud Light or Budweiser, but I wouldn't put it too far above those, actually. I'm going to go uh, two out of five drinking horns on this. You know, it's a little disappointing. You think an Oktoberfest, you know, they'd really roll out their, uh, a really premium, uh, best-tasting ale they've got, but really have tasted much better brews from the Horny Goat uh, Brewing Company. So a little disappointed with this. Uh, so I think two out of five drinking horns will do it. All right, so let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I was uh, looking for more quotations from Beatles, and I uh, found another one from George Harrison that I thought was uh, fairly appropriate. It was something like this. The Beatles saved the world from boredom. See you guys next week. I'm standing in the original rat killer, and indeed these are some of the original rats. <laughs>